Good morning, everyone. Just finished a leg workout. We got up at 4.15 this morning. When I say we, my wife and I just worked out. And it's about 6.23 a.m. right now. About to eat some breakfast. And it's been a while since we've done a Facebook Live. So I wanted to do one, whether you listen to this on a Facebook Live or a podcast. I figured a good topic would be is to share back in the day in 2003 when I started practice and I got into a very successful clinic as an associate doctor, how I really just learned that I didn't really need to follow systems and now it's changed quite a bit. So what I'm going to show you in our day one through day five, if you want to see more detail on it, if you go to the demo link, you can see me walk through, I'll show you, I'll flip this around, you can see me walk through the whole inside of this portal, all these different all these different tracks, okay? And it's funny, I was talking to a good buddy of mine yesterday, and he was like, Todd, your systems need to stop being just a thing that people access here. He said, you need to like start franchising clinics and teach people how to do this straight from the get-go. And I said, yeah, I get that. We're not doing that quite yet. But it's very comprehensive, is what he was saying. It's like everything on how to run a practice, everything, every forum, every objection, everything. And this is what I'm going to cover in just a second after I tell you the story, which is our day one through five process. And then look at that. That's the first 12 weeks of care. And then this is the next year of care when someone goes through care with us. So we have it all mapped out and it's not a cookie cutter approach. It's totally customized based on what the patient has which I know a lot of us chiropractors that want to be great clinicians. And I talk to a lot of chiropractors and it's really refreshing to find out that their main drive to have more systems and to do better is because they want to do better for their patients. So that's, that's a nice, it's not a surprise, but it's, it's just, it's just nice to see that that's still the main driver in so many doctors that we do, <laughs> uh, we talk about, excuse me, <clears throat> get the morning cobwebs out of my throat. All right, let me drink some matcha tea. It says, all my children have paws. I had this cup before we had a son. Now we have a son that has hands and feet. All right. So anyway, back when I got into practice in 2003, I went into a really successful clinic. And they had a couple of systems. They had very little staff. It was, uh, well, there was quite a bit of staff, like in billing and that sort of thing. But we usually had one front desk person when it was busy. We had two front desk people. And their job was to check in, check out, schedule, take payment, Right. And then us doctors were kind of in charge of everything else. So I had the autonomy to follow whatever systems I wanted to follow. I wasn't forced to follow any particular systems. The lead doctor there didn't really have big time systems. He was always of the mindset, keep everything very, very simple because staff's not gonna be able to follow, uh, figure it out. It's gonna be too complex. And, and I was always a systems guy, but I kind of had to bite my tongue because I said, hey, I'm not gonna try to reinvent the wheel. I'm gonna learn from a master who's been doing this a long time. Well. In that clinic, we had a ton of new patients all the time, 50 plus new patients per month with little to no marketing. They just came in and I did marketing to build up my patient base and I got on the walk-in rotation, but there was other associate doctors there. They actually got more of the walk-ins because I was so busy with the patients that I went, got, I went out and did talks and did screenings and stuff and that's how I got a lot of my patients. But anytime I didn't have one of my patients, there was people calling in or walking in. So we had tons of new patients. Now, because of that, we got spoiled and we got complacent and that we didn't have fantastic systems as far as like day one, do this, day two, do this, make sure you educate all of this process. We, we, we had that on day one. You know, we did a very brief consultation. We'd go back, we'd, we, would, we would take x-rays first, then we would check them. Um, I flipped around certain orders of things that I thought were just made more logical sense and we dialed in more clinical stuff in how we practice now. And, you know, I'm... I'm going on 17 years in practice and but back in the day like I look at what I did now and I think man if we applied even half of the systems that we do now to how we practiced before with that huge influx of new patients that we just got with hardly doing anything we would have had to open multiple clinics multiple times over because we were delivering such a high level of care to our patients so I, I'm saying that not saying oh we would just have to see way more people and open more clinics so we can make more money. Like that's not the drive. It's that if you did a more complete job with each patient, you wouldn't have to see that much volume per doctor. You would have a very high level of clinical care 
great outcomes, excellent outcomes with each patient, and you would demand more doctors to be able to keep up with with the demand of all the new patients coming in because you'd have a higher level of conversions of people actually starting a corrective type of care which addresses the segmental component, which is chiropractic, postural component, which is, you could argue that's chiropractic, but there's like rehab methods to help fix posture, whether it's traction, exercise, body weighting, those types of things. And then there's the movement aspect of it, which is really where we came out saying, let's share our systems in the commonality of movement. And however you do posture segment, that's up to you, but I have my biased opinions on what I think works best. And so I inject that into our training as much as I can. Um, but the functional movement aspect of it is what we tie this all together with. So anyway, back to the story. We saw all these new patients and ha- more than half of them would come in the front door, leave out the back door, meaning they would be seen like three or four times. You never see them again. Some people, if we did implement any sort of system, which we did in phases, like we'd have a couple months where we would do a day two and explain their x-ray in more detail. And then in other cases, their day two where we would explain the x-ray would be super, super brief. We weren't really prompting them on any sort of like action as far as how do you want us to take care of you? How do you want to proceed? It's just, hey, I'm going to see a handful of visits very close together and we're going to get you out of pain. It was all about like, let's get you out of pain. It wasn't about correction or any sort of preventative stuff. It was all about you came in with pain. Let's get you out of pain. That's it. It was very little energy from the doctor, very little commitment, very little thought process from us. And you do that and you become complacent. After several years of doing that, it's, it's easy. And you just kind of, at least for me, I lost the passion of why I got into chiropractic because I got into chiropractic to be a clinician, to problem solve, to help people in a natural way, to feel fulfilled and that I was doing my best to treat them in their entirety, take care of them in their entirety and not just... I'm going to do this little fraction of thing and then I'm going to lie to myself that that small adjustment that I'm doing is going to fix all the woes in their entire life. It's going to address their diet. It's going to improve their movement. It's going to inspire them to exercise. It's going to give them long-term security and that their spine's not going to break down prematurely at the same exact rate as someone else who's never seen a chiropractor a day in their life. Those are all the things that I just had to be okay with. And so I did lie to myself for many years and then... I stumbled upon chiropractic biophysics and that was the thing that really jump-started me to start being a clinician again and start problem solving and thinking. It really got me excited and then um, I started seeing the systems involved. I hooked up with uh, Dr. Fred DiDomenico from Elite Coaching. He's a very systems-oriented kind of guy, day one, day two, day three. Really resonated with that. Um, had a lot of thoughts and ideas of my own so I took his ideas and and built it into what I was already doing. And then I developed out a ton more systems to accommodate a more evolved model of care that we're doing now, which includes functional movement. So now fast forward to what we're doing now, and I'll take you through the day one through day five process. I'll flip the camera around here just in a second. Um, But what we're doing now is using the best technology now to really leverage our time as the chiropractor. So wherever you can automate something, we automate something. Why are we going to say the same thing over and over again to every patient when it's, you know, a helpful, useful thing that they need to know when you could put it into a video and you could pre-frame the video properly. So it's not like, oh, you're making me watch a video that's so impersonal, but instead it's, oh, wow, you have a higher level, a higher tech way of doing things and your, your communication and commitment to excellence is so high and you want consistency in your message, like these are all the things that, that, that you can present to a patient like that and they say, wow, that's a huge benefit. They watch a video, it saves you 10 to 12 minutes of talking, then you can dive deeper with the patient. You can now in a couple of days get where it might have taken you two weeks with the patient as far as an understanding so that they can see the big picture and then they can make an empowering decision to say, yes, I want to get this fixed versus... You have to see me three times, do whatever my insurance covers. Um, I want to do the cheapest route possible. Whatever, like all the stuff that people say, I don't have enough time, which is the biggest lie of all. You know, a lot of times I'm quoting Jocko because I listen to a lot of Jocko stuff lately. I mean, he's really got some great stuff and it totally parallels to what we do in chiropractic. Got my got my shirt on right now, discipline equals freedom. You like that? Um, I've always, for a while now, almost the last two years, I wake up 
in the four o'clock zone. So there's a lot of things in there that resonate with me. But something that Jocko says is he says, excuses are lies. Okay, so when your patients have an excuse, 99% of the time that's a lie. It's, it's a lack of value. It's a lack of prioritizing. When you have an excuse, you as the chiropractor who might be watching this live or listening to this, and you say, that's too complicated. It's too much work. Man, I have to learn something new. Or like, my staff's not going to get it. Or my clinic's not big enough. Or, or patients aren't going to want it. Or it's different in my town. Those are all lies. Those are just lies you tell yourself to be complacent and keep going without taking action. So just be honest and just say, if I'm saying that I am a liar and I need to stop lying or I can just be honest with myself and not make the excuses and just say I'm doing it because I just don't want to, like I'm lazy, okay? So it's either one or the other and I hold pretty steadfast on that because it's not about, it's not about my systems. It's not about following what I'm saying. It's about doing a better job clinically for your patient. There's different ways to do this. We just happen to have some really killer systems that I've done about 20 to 50 reiterations of the systems to dial them in. We've tested them. They work. If you want to reinvent the wheel, go for it. It took me several years. And in my several years, that's like 20 hours a day, several years. For anyone who knows me, I, I haven't really found a whole lot of people that can outwork me in this process. And I'm not saying that to uh, make you feel like isolated if you're like, man, I'm not that hardcore. It's okay. You don't have to be. I'm saying that because I put the systems together so you didn't have to. Okay. So that's why I'm saying that to follow the systems and do them. You don't have to work that hard. That's the nice thing. You work smart, you use automation, you use things that leverage your time. But I created this stuff and I created in the last about three years working pretty hard, and I think I did about 10 years worth of work, and I'm not exaggerating. So I'm going to show you some of this stuff. We'll flip this around. So this is inside of the doctor portal. When you get in, it says introduction. This is our program, Move Now University. But you scroll down, and this section is the part I want to go over. It's section six, clinical operations. Okay, We have the schedule, so how to map out your schedule. Why do we do this? Because that's what, that's like one of the first things you have to do. You got to figure out how do you put special appointments in day one, day two, day three. Um, what's the flow of this rules of how you schedule? Like I'll pull up one of these as an Excel spreadsheet. Okay, so this is this is showing how things are timed together per the time. For a, a day two is a broth brief report of findings. A froth is a formal report of findings, which is a, a financial. Okay, a day three. NP is new patient. All of us know that. So it just shows how to time these things, how it flows. We have it all mapped out, almost like a strategy before you go out for like a football play. And then track 46 is day zero. So before the patient even comes in, what's the prep work? Day one. And so just to click into one of these things, we have flow charts. We have video training, greeting tour. We have stuff that we actually filmed live at our impact event, which we have one coming up the end of February. If you want info on that, let me know and I'll get you a link. Um, it's actually impact.movenowyou.com. Impact.movenowyou.com. That's how you get to a page to find out more about the impact event. We got a bunch of people come out for that. So anyway, this is just for day one, okay? And all the forms and all the paperwork. And then we go to day two and we show you all the ways to do day two. So how we do what's called a pre, well, this right here is before before you go in and have a patient watch a broth, the brief report of findings video, how you pre-frame it. Video explains how to pre-frame the broth video and the steps prior to sitting the patient down. So they don't say, oh, you're just making me watch a video, but instead they go, wow, this is really cool. And then we show how we do our video. And then I made a whole script of how we do this so that you can make your own video right here. This is one of the only spots that you have to actually make your own video. All the other automations we made, we made them so that they work for pretty much all chiropractic clinics. Day three, before you go through the financial with your patient, really cool thing. Day three, before you go through the financial, the patient sits down and they watch a video. And why do they do that? I'm going to show you where that video is. Why do they do that? They do that. This is a sneak peek to that video. Why do they watch that video? They watch that video so that it's a consistent message and it saves you time and it pre-frames the whole conversation. So I made this on behalf of all Move Now doctors who, who, um, who identify as a Move Now chiropractor because of the systems and the clinical excellence. And so watch, I'll show you just a few seconds of it. Hi, 
My name is Dr. Todd Pickman from MoveWell. You're watching this because your doctor is part of an elite group of chiropractors that follow a more advanced level of patient care. So much so that we felt it was required for us to take a few minutes to lay out what really makes this approach so unique and different. Right after I cover these important details regarding the MoveWell comprehensive approach to patient care, your doctor will then meet with you and go over your customized care recommendations. First off, we designed this overview process out of necessity. We found that before creating this, our patients would have questions about how different parts of the treatment and clinical picture all fit together. And we were missing out on explaining all of the moving parts as best as we could. We knew there was a better way, so we created it. Patients routinely tell us that this overview process really helped them fully understand the benefits of how the clinic works and has got them excited to get started. We are all about empowering our patients through knowledge so for that reason, please give us your undivided attention for the next 15 minutes. Yes, 15 minutes, but bear with me, you will love this. One last thing, we handed you a note sheet so that as we cover the overview process, you can jot down a few things that catch your attention that you will want to discuss with your doctor. So please use this tool so that we can best address your questions or concerns. So please, put your cell phones away, grab a drink of water if need be, make a quick bathroom stop, and let's get rolling. So that video happens, you probably noticed that there is a button that pops up under the video that's timed about a minute in. Take me to the next section. Why do we do this? Because instead of having them sit down and watch a long video, we break it up in pieces so that they don't feel like they're sitting down watching a long video. It's interactive. So we call this the, the patient interactive financial, the patient interactive froth. Take me to the next step. And then that button takes them to this, video one, how it all begins with movement. So I'll just show you like a few seconds and I'll get out of it, but here's the different videos that we made. And we made these universal for all Move Now doctors, so you don't have to remake these videos because I made sure it doesn't, it doesn't count you out if you don't you know, do everything like we do. It really is just like if you address segment posture and movement, this is going to help explain this to a patient before you go through the recommendations. In this video, we're going to cover the big picture of how movement works and why it is so important, and then we're going to work our way backwards to explain how so many of us end up in pain and seeking help to feel better again. Now here's a problem. Most doctors out there simply do not address measuring or correcting movement. I want to share a video that is actually intended for chiropractors. Just so let me go through and we tell a story about little Johnny that went to school and he was functional at first and then he had to sit down all the time and then he played video games and he became a dysfunctional adult and then he had pain and then he couldn't remember a time that he didn't have pain all the time. And so it goes through that whole thing and then the patient can usually resonate with that and say, wow, that's how it all happens. And then it works its way backwards from movement um, to posture and then to segment. So it explains chiropractic. And depending on what techniques you do or whatever, like you fill in all of that, this just gives them the big picture to put, put together segment posture movement. So all of these things that I'm showing you, I'm going to, I'm going to run through this brief because like this is a pretty detailed, a pretty detailed flow chart, but this shows day one. So day one, tour, new patient consult, and then new patient exam x-ray. If they're acute, we adjust them and then we, we send them a text message in our clinic for for it goes to a landing page with a with a video that gives them an overview of what they did that day that they can show to a spouse and has some links on that page that they can get back to the website learn more about what we do that by the way is inside of a funnel that we share it's part of our program it's called a day one through four um email template and, and it basically sends them to these pages okay and there's emails that come along with that too and you just fill them in on how you want we show you how to automate it and then day two they watch a broth video, a brief report of findings video about, about what we're gonna go over. That's the video you make, so you explain how you do things. So if you do x-ray, or you send out for x-ray, and you use that, preferably, we're huge advocates of x-ray, great. If not, and there's similar doctors that don't do x-ray, then you leave that part out. Um, then brief report of findings, and then you adjust them, and then patient chooses option A or B. A is short-term care, B is I wanna get this thing fixed. Either way, they're doing a movement assessment called a move wall three. All right. If they're if they're choosing option B to do corrective care, we're building a recommendation card. That card's inside the program. We have training videos on how to build the card, build the recommendations, how it's not cookie cutter. It's really based on clinical findings. And then we hand that off to our billing department or our front desk person, whomever helps us in the clinic with this, or you do it yourself, depending on how you're staffed. Okay. And then you create the all the financial documents for day three. We send them a checkout. 
a checkout uh, text message goes to a page. Again, day three, they're greeted, adjusted, now they watch froth videos. Okay, that takes about 15 minutes is the version that we built for everyone else. All right, and then doctor comes in, goes over everything, and then they either commit, we take care of payment then, today, or we do it the next visit, or if they're a backpedaler, we have, we have protocols on that. Backpedaler means on day two, they say, yeah, I'm on board, I wanna do this, but then on day three, they go, no, I don't wanna do this. Well, either way, we have systems for this, and all of this stuff is covered in detail. Day four now is where they start care. They check in, they go to an exercise orientation, they get onboarded to the online membership site that we have built for our patients and we also cloned and give to all of our Move Now doctors. So that's part of the program is you get, is you get a clone of this thing called the 12-week transformation and a journal that patients get. And I have a journal right here. Here's a journal. Journal. Okay. So journal with lots of pages inside of it. And, and then patient gets adjusted. If you're doing traction in office... We do, you don't have to, that's not part of the program, but we do, because we do chiropractic biophysics along with Gonstead and functional movement. And then patient then goes through home care recommendations in office with the staff or with the doctor or exercise therapist, whomever, depending on how you're set up. And then they get their home care stuff, get their home mobility kit, their home curve correction. We actually have home mobility kits that are branded for Move Well Rehab. And whatever curve correction you're doing, we have a neck traction unit that we patented and designed. Um, there's other curve correction stuff out there that we use if it's for thoracic or lumbar. And then the patient gets a checkout text message that goes to a page. Day five, patient's just gone through a lot of stuff on day four. They come back on day five, check in, they watch a goals video. They go to the exercise area. Okay, depending on how many units of exercise they're doing and what to do, 38 to 53 minutes back there. Yep, that's how it works. Okay, you can dial that down if you need to, but that's how we do it. And then patient gets adjusted. The doctor reviews the goals with them, sets goals, reviews goals. Very important because that's going to be um, referenced on re-exams and at the end of their first phase of care. And then they do traction. If you do traction in office, they ice and they check out and you smile and wave, meaning we don't have any more texts that we send them after that necessarily. And then they're off to the races. So then... It goes week two, week three, week four, week five, and we go through this whole process. So that's a very quick overview on a lot of stuff that is dialed in with multiple steps and forms and training. But why even put all the effort into doing that? Because in the practice I was in back in New Mexico, we just had a bunch of new patients and we lost a bunch of new patients. And over the years, you have people in your community saying, oh yeah, I went to that clinic and it, it wasn't that big of a deal or like it didn't fix me or whatever. At a certain point, you start to see enough people in your community that you either make a really good impression or kind of a mediocre impression. I think we had a good reputation, however. However, we had a lot of patients that I said came in the front door, left out the back door. And those are the people that we really just did not make a great impression with. And I think if we could have gone back and done it with systems like this, we would have transformed a lot more people's thought processes, their lives, their circle of influences, every person they come in contact with for the rest of their life. Things would have grown much more exponentially. There would have been more reward and, and uh, just, just accomplishment as us, as the doctors, as making a bigger impact. So that's ultimately what this is all about. That's how we do this now in practice. We see less volume. We get better results. We have a higher commitment rate, conversion rate. Um, all of that stuff because we just do a more complete job with each patient and it's a lot more fun. I'll tell you, it's a lot more rewarding. We feel like, feel like we're a better doctor. We can resonate more talking with other doctors in the community and different professions. They have a higher level of respect for what we do because they see how much effort and how much care we put into our patient management, our patient care. We can work with, you know, other doctors and attorneys and, get into businesses that normally have been hit up by chiropractors that are like, oh, that's just chiropractic. And we can present it in a different light and it just opens the doors to way more stuff. So that's the why behind all of this. Anyway, hopefully that was helpful. Check out the demo where I run through every single track inside of our program step by step by step. It takes about 30 minutes to go through it. I know this is a pretty long overview right now, but I really just try to focus on more of the day one through day five and the why, why do we have so many steps on day one through day five? Because it sets up a patient successful for their care and for the rest of their life. It's worth five days 
of effort. It's worth of training your staff to make that much of an impact and make things go so much smoother for your patient and for you and your team. So hopefully you found this helpful. Check out demo.movenowyou.com. Check out the demo if you haven't already. Share it with other chiropractors. Okay, cool. Thanks. Very helpful. Awesome. Good morning, doc. How's it going? Um, but share it with other doctors, other chiropractors, other people you graduated school from who are kind of lost and don't know what to do. Show them this stuff. I promise you they've never seen systems like this in their entire life. It doesn't exist. All right? It, this, this is it. And this is just a brief overview of it. So check out the demo, comment, questions, let me know. Appreciate y'all. Have a great week in practice. If you're in practice this week, I know it's the week of Christmas, a very short week for me, meaning today is my only day and then I fly out tomorrow. So enjoy time with your family. Um, on your downtime, as far as what I'm gonna do on my downtime, I'm gonna spend time with family, but I'm also, if I'm not with family and I have other time, I'm gonna sharpen the sword. I'm gonna study because I have some new things that we're going to be launching in January in our clinic. This is the time to do it for 2020. And if you haven't pulled the trigger yet with Move Now University, here's the time to do it. There's lots you can start studying. You can listen to it on a smartphone. Uh, you can listen to it when you're at the gym, when you're you know out on a bike ride, running, whatever, laying in bed at night. So that's what I do when I'm learning something new as I just immerse myself in it. And it gets me so excited to then put it into practice. We're doing that right now with something that I will be announcing once we get it up and running. But enjoy however you enjoy your time off. And uh, we'll talk with you real soon. So over and out.